Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Crow and I am going to be your AP World History teacher this year. I would like to first start by saying I am so sorry that I am not with you on the first day of class. Uh, however, my daughter is moving into her dorm today uh, at OU and I had to weigh the decision about whether or not to be uh, at school on the first week or have a once uh, in a lifetime, you know, experience as a dad helping my daughter move in. So I hope you forgive me. I'll look forward to uh, introducing myself to you guys and meeting everyone on Thursday. But I did want to give you a little bit of overview and uh, uh, some information that you're going to need for this class the first day. Um, so I have some slides to go through. And if you'll pay attention, um, there's some important information that you'll need, and then I'll let, I'm going to turn you guys loose into a, a little activity here in a little bit. Okay, so research has shown that students uh, have three questions that they need answered the first day of school. The first question is, what supplies do I need? Second is, what is my teacher like? And the third question is, of course, what will I be studying? So first of all, what supplies do you need? Um, in this class, you're going to need to obtain a three to five subject spiral college rule. This is where you're going to be doing a lot of your note taking. You're going to be doing some reading notes in this spiral. Um, this will be some, you know, a, a place where you can do some writing practices and activities. So you're going to need to have some kind of spiral for this class. I will check your spiral occasionally. I'll check your reading notes occasionally. So that is a part of the, the grade for this class. You're going to need a, also every day, you're going to need to bring your Chromebook. Um, now, if you opted out of the Chromebook and you have your own device, that's fine, but you still need to be able to use Lockdown Browser and uh, AP Classroom. And if your device does not allow for that, highly, highly recommend that you do the one-for-one -one, uh, Chromebook um, program that Frisco ISD offers. I think it's like only 20 bucks to get a Chromebook if you do the, you know, fill out the uh, paperwork. So it, uh, Chromebooks work. They're not the, uh, you know, the best, most powerful um, pieces of technology that you can do all kinds of video editing on and everything, but they work for what you need it to do in this class. Um, you're going to need something to write with, obviously a pen, you're going to need pencils. Um, I don't require this because I have um you know, extras in my class, but you're going to need some highlighters. Uh, we do do some highlighting activities, particularly when we start doing our DBQs and our LEQs and our SAQs, a lot of our writing activities you're going to have to have a highlighter for. That's what you need in terms of supplies. So the second question that every student wants to know on the first day of school is, what is my teacher like? Um, this will be my 27th year of teaching a 24th year in Frisco ISD. I've taught virtually every history class you can teach from 7th through 12th grade. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in uh, English and history from the University of Texas at Austin, a master's from the University of Texas Permian Basin, and I am currently serving as the instructional coach slash department chair for the social studies department here at Liberty High School. I have been married since the late 1900s. I have two uh, teenage children, actually an 18-year-old and a 20-year-old now. Uh, when I'm not teaching, um, I enjoy relaxing by reading historical fiction, fantasy, nonfiction, um, I enjoy dabbling in art. Here are some examples of my uh, digital art and watercolors. I also like to play chess and uh, do the daily New York Times puzzles uh, on that app. If I'm not doing any of those things, I'm probably uh, chilling with my two dogs, Charlie and Dory. And um, yeah, so that's it about me. And so the final question that every student has on the first day is, what will I be studying in this class? So we will go back all the way to the beginning of settled agriculture, which was about 10,000 years ago. And we'll start to look at the very first civilizations about five and a half thousand years ago. But uh, relax, you do not have to know about every historical event and person and thing that ever happened uh, in the last 10,000 years. 
we'll, we will be following the College Board's AP World History Modern Scope and Sequence with the units that they have uh, conveniently divided world history into. Um, since this is a, a, a modern world history course, the AP exam doesn't really cover anything before 1200 uh, CE, but we will, of course, because this is the state of Texas and you're also uh, required to learn these things in high school, we'll be studying the Greeks and the Romans and the rise of Islam and Christianity and all of those things that happened uh, before the medieval period. So these are the units, these um, eight, nine units that you see here, uh, the first couple will be, you know, the later medieval, later middle age period. And we'll look at uh, many different regions and uh, areas around the world and what was going on. Um, then probably in the second nine weeks, beginning of the second nine weeks or so, we'll get into the early modern period, uh, 1450 to 1750, with kind of the rise of European uh, voyages of discovery and the connection of the Western and Eastern hemispheres. And then in the third nine weeks, we'll get into the modern era. So the rise of the industrial revolution and the political revolutions and uh, all of the social changes and political changes that, that uh, arise because of those revolutions. And then the last uh, nine weeks or so, a little, little bit toward the end of the third nine weeks, we'll get into the 20th century and uh, and that's where we will end the course. So um, there is a lot of history, but you don't do not need to know about everything that ever happened. Just what the College Board um, has laid out for us. If you want to know more before I come and uh, answer your questions on Thursday, there is a one page handout that the substitute should be giving you today. So um, if you want to learn more, then that's basically laid out there for you. You can always go to the College Board website. And I'll show you how to do that, get to the course description, course and exam description. Speaking of the exam, please don't, um, you know, make any orthodontist or doctor appointments on May 8th. That is when we will have our AP World History Modern exam. And uh, if you stay in the class, we did pretty well last year. I think about 9 out of 10 kids got college credit. So if you're coming to class, participating, doing the readings, and uh, and working with your peers and, and with me, uh, you'll be prepared for that test at the end of the year. Even if you, even if you don't pass the test, which is unlikely, but if you don't, um, college admissions officers would rather see that you have um, AP uh, credits on your transcript versus... Uh, regular course credits, that's more important to them than, you know, your GPA or your class rank, or even if you pass the AP exam, they want to see that you're trying to push yourself, um, and, uh, and and they want to see that you're prepared to do well at the post-secondary, um, you know, in, in the post-secondary environment. Uh, also, your parents may uh, be glad because the more AP classes you take in uh, high school, the more opportunities you have to, to pass AP exams, and you know, these are three-hour credits uh, courses mostly, and so you're saving a whole bunch of money. As you can see here on this slide, the whole bunch of money that uh, you don't have to spend in college, and you can maybe graduate a little bit earlier or begin your master's or, or doctorate program a little bit earlier and, and come out of college with a little bit less debt. Um, so yeah, so the other thing about this class is that it is a college level course. So you, you know, will be treated as a freshman at the university level. That's the level of maturity and expectation that we'll have in this course. Um, you will be expected to do some reading. There is some outside of class reading uh, requirements. I don't assign more than say eight to 10 pages every other day. So you might have a chapter a week or a chapter every week and a half to get through. Um, and we don't read every single week throughout the year, but, you know, we will read, we will get through uh, the textbook by the end of the end of the course. So I've made a handy dandy reading calendar. I'll update it, you know, daily on our Canvas page. I'll also link the reading calendar on the Canvas page. So there's no confusion as to what your homework is. And uh, you will be held accountable for that outside of class reading as well as the content and the lectures and the activities and the skills and the writing 
um, you know, uh, skills that we'll be doing in class as well as, as part of your grade. So yeah, so that's a little bit about the course. Um, again, super sorry that I'm not here with you guys on day one, but I do look forward to meeting you and, and visiting with you on Thursday. All right, so the next thing that you're going to do, the substitute's going to explain what the activity is. And uh, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and uh, look forward to seeing you on later on in the week. Bye-bye.